Good afternoon, Stanley County. My name is Tommy Jordan. I'm one of your Stanley County Commissioners and I'm also on the Board of Health. And I'm coming to you today, Friday, September 4th, on the Friday before Labor Day, to maybe try and dispel some of the misinformation that's being distributed about our COVID-19 numbers or, or how people are interpreting those numbers. Um, we had a Board of Health meeting about this last night. I asked for clarification before I talked to you, and I also called the health director about 10 minutes before I made this video, just to be sure my information was right before I tried to explain it. Um, and it is, it's as accurate as I know how to make it. So I'm hoping this will dispel some fears because what seems to be happening, and keep in mind, I'm gonna use totally fictitious numbers. I'm just gonna make numbers up, okay? Let's say yesterday, September 3rd, our total active cases number was 250. And today, when people look, let's say it's 325, okay? Many people are interpreting that as, oh my gracious, we just had 75 infections yesterday. I'm going home, locking my doors, putting on my mask, crawling in the bathtub, burying myself under a blanket, and not coming out till spring, okay? Um, while I won't argue the efficacy of that particular approach, I think it's unwarranted. So, to understand why, you have to understand how the number that you read is presented to you and, and why it's presented that way. It's just not a failing on behalf of the health department or a failing on behalf of um, s someone to get you the information as timely as they can. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Um, so, when any of the agencies in our county, anybody, hospital, nursing home, uh, a person going to the health department's drive through testing, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Any of the testing that goes on in Stanley County gets submitted to one of a variety of labs. The hospital uses one lab, the health department uses another lab, a doctor's office might use a third lab, and a particular long-term care facility may use yet a fourth lab. These, te these lab tests are, prior first they're prior prioritized. I'm a 40-year-old healthy male. I'm a 43-year-old before somebody busts me on, on that healthy male that has no, no, no side effects. I have no shortness of breath. I don't have uh, chills or a fever or cough. So when the lab gets my results, they kind of go to the bottom of the pile. Whereas if I am a 78-year-old um, patient from a nursing home with a history of you know, pulmonary issues and shortness of breath, I go up the pile. And I get tested quicker because it's more important. Um, so that happens at all the, all the labs. All the labs test people at a different pace based on prior, prior, priority at that moment. Okay, That's one thing. Um, the next thing is when we get these numbers back as a county, uh, all these labs report the numbers back to Stanley and the county, and we get them. What you're seeing today on the report is the list of lab results we got back today on the report. Keep in mind, those aren't all the tests from yesterday. In fact, very few, if any of those tests were from yesterday, unless they were probably prior, prior, priority patients. 9% of those tests are going to be from the day before, two days before, up to and including five to eight days before. Um, for a while, some of you experienced testing time that took 10 to 14 days. My mother took 21 days to get her test back. She already gone through quarantine, took an, a, another extra week, and still hadn't heard, heard back because the labs were so backed up. Um, these numbers have drastically dropped lately as labs are ramping up their testing ability. They're ramping up their ability to test faster. They, they never intended, they never had a design on having to be forced to run this many tests for any particular thing um, this much. I mean, you know, th they planned for 20,000 flu cases this season. Now they're being asked to process 250,000 tests a week. Uh, they weren't prepared either, either, and they couldn't have been expected to be. So now things have kind of slowed down, but they give us the results. We publish them. Here's the results that came in today. And these, and, and so the number did jump by, let's say 75. The, the number spiked by 75 since yesterday's report. That means that between whatever the earliest date was on on that test to the latest date on that test, there were 75 cases. Does that mean that's not important and you shouldn't be concerned? Well, no, because 75 cases is still 75 cases. But that may be 
seven cases a day for 10 days, which is not a horrible number. That may be uh, one particular nursing home that had an outbreak that had, did a test of 150 people, and all of a sudden, 36 of those people popped positive. Well, then that number is going to be inflated because of that nursing home. Um, that does not mean that all around the county, the, the COVID-19 infection rate just skyrocketed. So um, just keep that in mind, all right? There's no way the county can get you really any more accurate information than they already are. They're doing the best they can with the information they're given, and they're disseminating it as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, the Stanley County Department of Health Facebook page has numbers every day. Stanley County government posts the numbers every day. A lot of my fellow commissioners post the numbers every day. I've quit kind of posting them because, quite frankly, they're being posted by everybody, so you don't need to see them in five different places. But um, that's the reason. That's why the numbers will appear to jump sometimes from day to day. It's not because we had a massive amount of infections the day before or even the day before that. It's because over the last week, maybe LabCorp got around to testing the 300 samples from Stanley that they had deprioritized last week and just got around to testing those and 12 of those are positive. So we find out about those 12. We, well not we, the county uh, health department and DHHS, they know who it was. They know what day the test was done, but they can't very well go back and publish, hey, by the way, 12 days ago, we told you the number was 250. It was actually 261. And when we said it was 270, it was actually 243 because of, that can't be done. So they release the numbers they get each day as they get them. Okay. Those are cumulative numbers from all the various labs that report for this county over the entire period that they may have tested and given us results. So they're not one day old. They're between two to three to seven to eight days old. Okay. I hope that helps. I hope that helps allay some fears that people have. I do still want people to take this seriously. Um, every death we do have is someone that somebody loved somewhere. I've been blessed. They weren't anybody so far that I knew or a relative of mine, but not everyone is blessed enough to say that. So before you go out there and make harsh acidic comments on Facebook about conspiracy theories or anything else, try to keep in mind that these people meant someone to somebody else. We're coming up on Labor Day weekend. It officially started an hour and a half ago. Why am I still here? I don't know. Um, because I wanted to share this. I do hope everybody has a wonderful Labor Day weekend. I hope you practice good social distancing. I'm not going to ask you to stay home. You're not going to. I don't blame you. Uh, but I do hope that you will keep in mind that we do need to do what we can to curb the spread because even if it's not going to make you sick, you can make someone else sick. So do what you can for your fellow man. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Don't do drugs. Don't drink and drive. Did I cover everything? I think so. Tommy Jordan, I'm out. Have a great Labor Day weekend. I'll talk to you soon.